Well, hey guys, this is Jess and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about stimulus versus response generalization. Now I've done videos on this before, but specifically we're going to just do four questions today. One's going to be about stimulus generalization. One's going to be about response generalization. And one's going to be about maintenance and discrimination. Because those are going to be what you might see as your answer choices if you get a question about this on your exam. Now, stimulus generalization is one thing that I say that people often teach, not the wrong way, but in a way that leads you to get the wrong answer. So I'm going to make it super, super clear today what stimulus versus response generalization is. And I'm going to explain it right now before we even jump into the video. So I want to make sure that you fully, fully understand this. Now, people say often, if there's more than one stimulus, it's stimulus generalization. And if there's more than one response, it's response generalization. Well, that's not true. Let me tell you why. We're not cavemen. We actually use stimuli in our things. Like if we want a drink of water, we might use a cup or a bottle or a mug. But what we're not doing is we're not going to the floor. Like I live in the desert, so certainly I'm not gonna do this and lap up like water off of the desert floor. That's ridiculous, right? We don't do that. So we use tools, we use stimuli in our responses. And so response can have, two, two different responses can have two different stimuli in it. And it's actually not stimulus generalization, it's response generalization. And so when looking at how many stimuli are in a question, will not lead you to getting the correct answer. Because if you look at a question, you use the question, the, the kind of gauge more than one stimulus, then it's stimulus generalization. And then you go and you get a question on this and you put stimulus generalization, right? When it's really just multiple responses that have each use a stimulus, you're going to get the question wrong. So how can you dissect this question that will lead to the correct answer every single time? Yeah, there is actually one way one question to ask yourself every time it will work to get you the answer right, no matter how many stimuli are in the responses. And that's, does the form or the topography of the response change? See, response generalization is when you use two different behaviors in order to achieve the same result on the environment, right? It means that they make up a functional response class. So the behaviors have the same function. It could be as simple as me drinking from a bottle and drinking from a cup, right? Those are two different behaviors that each have the same results, which is me getting water. Or it could be me doing my dishes and me hiring a cleaning person to do the dishes, right? Either way, this is the same effect on the environment. Those behaviors make up the same functional response class. And so that is an example of response generalization. So again, you're never, ever, 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 ever going to ask yourself, is there more than one stimuli? You're going to ask yourself one question, does the response look different? If the response looks different, it is response generalization. If the response stays exactly the same, and I mean exactly the same, like I'm not talking waving like this and then waving like this, that's response generalization. I mean, it has to stay exactly the same response, then it could potentially be stimulus generalization. So what is stimulus generalization? Stimulus generalization is when you engage in the exact same behavior with different conditions. Very, very rarely, believe it or not, does that actually mean that you're using a stimulus and the stimulus changes. In fact, it's almost impossible to come up with an example in which that would work other than something silly like you know, with you know, different colored plates or your different colored utensils. And maybe you could make the argument that response is staying exactly the same, but it's almost impossible to come up with an example where you're actually doing something with stimuli and it's stimulus generalization. Typically, stimulus generalization is going to be doing the same behavior in a different place or with a different person, or it could just be tacting or manding, right, for different items that look physically the same where the response stays exactly the same. For example, if I say dog when I see one dog and then I see dog when I say another dog, that would be an example of where the stimulus is changing and it's, and it's stimulus generalization. But for the most part, stimulus generalization actually refers to doing something in a different setting or with another person. So that's something that you really, really, really need to know. Now, I none of us know what's right going to be on the exam, but it is very likely you're going to see something about stimulus and response generalization. And so it's very, very important you have that distinction down. And again, don't ever, it's like my pet peeve, don't ever say, is there more than one response that's response generalization? If there more than one stimulus, it's stimulus generalization. Throw that out, 
forget about it. Whoever told you that, they are not going to help you get the right answer on the test, right? You're going to ask yourself one question from now on, does the response look different? It will lead to the correct answer every single time, I promise, and it's a lot easier, a lot easier if there's one easy question. All right, so let's talk about what maintenance is and what discrimination is so we can go through the four questions I set up for you today. Maintenance is going to be when you stop teaching something, right, and then some time passes, and then you do it, you do, um, you do the behavior. Now, sometimes it's going to make some reference where you can argue that maintenance actually is seamless generalization. Like it might say that some time passed and then, you know, a kid learned something in school and then the summer happened and the kid wasn't learning, wasn't being taught this. And then in the new classroom, he was able to do it. You can ar argue that that's also seamless generalization, but I can tell you right now, if the question's talking about time passing where, from when the behavior was taught and then the child can still do it, they're looking for maintenance as the answer. Okay, so discrimination, what is discrimination? Discrimination is simply that you engage in a behavior in the presence of an SD, and you don't engage in the behavior when an SD is not present. So for example, if I say bumblebee when I see bee, and I see say fly when I see a fly, well, that's discrimination, right? I'm saying fly when a fly is present, and I'm not saying fly when a fly is not present. I'm saying bee when a bee is present, and I'm not saying bee when a bee is not present. That's really all it is. So now that you know all of those things, now that you have my one very easy question and you will never, ever, ever get a question wrong again about stimulus or response generalization, let's go through four questions together. Okay, guys. Well, welcome back. Let's go through these questions. Um, just want to give a shout out to some of my coaching students who helped with some of these questions. You guys may or may not know. For anyone who purchases my course, the deep dive on um, the deep dive, you can actually work with me for only twenty nine dollars a month, every day, Monday through Friday, for one hour in a private coaching study group. And so these are questions that were written by people in the group. So here it says, a girl was taught to write her name with a pencil. The next day on her own, she wrote her name with a marker. What did she engage in? Now, this is where you're going to ask yourself that one simple question. Did the response change? It did, right? Because in order to use a marker, you have to engage in a different behavior. You have to take the top off of it and... A marker looks different than a pencil. A pencil, you're going to have to sharpen, right? So these are two different behaviors. Now, if you were to use that ridiculous gauge when that people teach, which is, is there more than one stimuli, then it's stimulus generalization, you would get this wrong. This is not stimulus generalization. This is response generalization. This is the most common mistake that I see people making. Because yes, they're using a, a stimuli, but again, guys, we're not cavemen. We don't sit around scratching our underarms, beating our chest, and licking food off of the floor and trying to kick, uh, excuse me, licking water off the floor and trying to catch bugs with our hands and eat them, right? No, we use tools in almost all of our responses. We use stimuli in most of our responses. These are two different behaviors. The fact that there is stimuli is totally irrelevant, right? It is different behaviors. So this is going to be response generalization. Here is, again, where if you ask yourself, does it look exactly the same to use a pencil and use a marker? The answer is going to be no. That will lead you to the right answer, response generalization every time, okay? So then one of my biggest pet peeves. The other one, and I just want to throw it out there, most of my coaching students know this, a line graph is not an AK for frequency polygon. Total different video, but just thought I'd throw it out there. Okay. John learned to use the toilet at school and home. Without any training, he was able to use the toilet at his cousin's house. What did John demonstrate? Now, I talked about earlier that stimulus generalization is going to be using the same behavior in a different setting or with a different person. This is actually stimulus generalization because using the toilet looks the same. Now, we don't actually know with 100% certainty that it's the same toilet at school and home and at John's house, maybe, or his, John's cousin's house. Maybe his cousin has a bidet, or it's a, you pull a string instead of using a regular lever to flush the toilet. 
but it doesn't say that, right? So when you're answering these questions, you do have to make and kind of just use all the information there and just kind of say, what are they trying to point out in this question? Because some people will overthink this and they'll say, well, we don't really know it's the same toilet. If it if this is trying to point out stimulus generalization, right? This is trying to point out that he has the same behavior in more than one place. So don't overthink things. If it the question does not tell you that the actual behavior is different, you can and it's and it's saying it's taking place in more than one place, then you can assume that the behavior looks the same to answer the question. Caleb says cat when he sees a cat, and he does not say cat when he sees other animals, this is discrimination, right? He's discriminating when to say cat and when when he should not say cat. Beverly learned to complete a puzzle. Two months later, her behavior technician took the puzzle out and asked her to complete it. Beverly was able to complete it. What did Beverly demonstrate? This is going to be maintenance, right? This is just going to show this maintenance is just showing you that something was taught, some time has passed, and the person can still do it. So that is maintenance. Okay, guys. Well, I hope that this video is really helpful for you. I hope you never, ever, ever get a question wrong again about stimulus and response generalization. I promise you that one question will work every single time. So I did mention my coaching group earlier in this video. I would love to work with you, whether it's through my live events, my private tutoring, my coaching group, or my course. I would love to continue to help you study. So if you like this video, check out my website, hopeeducationservices.com, and hopefully I'll see you at one of my events.